Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Tuesday, August 29th, 2023. It's about 12.46 p.m. California time. Latest quake uh, looks like some movement here with a 2.2 in Puerto Rico, also a 1.2 into California. Going to jump into that here in just a little bit, checking out the latest information here on Hurricane Idalia, uh, which is now at a 90 mile per hour sustained wind area category, category one. Uh, this will continue to kick up as um, it makes its way towards the um, areas here along the Florida coast, rapidly intensifying. In fact, a quick glance here at the latest satellite imagery does show quite a bit of convection bands out here across the eastern edge, also within the center, which doesn't quite have an eye yet, uh, but it's very possible we could see that form before landfall late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Again, latest information, um, it's moving off at the north at about 15 miles per hour here. It is expected to turn uh, to the northeast eventually before making its way out uh, towards the Atlantic through Georgia and South Carolina region. There is hurricane warnings in effect here in the red outline. Also tropical storm warnings as well in the blue uh, along portions of the Florida coast, uh, west and east over here up through Georgia and South Carolina. So. Uh, we're going to continue to watch this and report back on things as they evolve. The latest info here on uh, the National Hurricane Center wording, its discussion and the outlook. Uh, they, meant, they mentioned right here that rapid intensification is expected before landfall. And Adalia is forecast to become a major hurricane when it reaches the Gulf Coast of Florida Wednesday morning. Now they're expecting it to be around a Category 3. Uh, it's pretty significant. Category 3 would be 111 to 129 mile per hour sustained winds there. You can see it in the red. That's going to be uh, Wednesday morning. Looks like around 5 a.m. or so. That's the expected um, landfall. Now that's tomorrow. So hopefully everyone has already gotten out of the harm's way within this area. They are expecting some major, major storm surge uh, from this hurricane. Right now minimum central pressure is 974. 28.76 inches there that's uh, pretty low and continuing to drop a uh, combination of all these uh, the wind storm surge and flooding looking at some major inundation going on there across certain areas looking at 10 to 15 feet near the Osceola River uh, to Yankee Town that's also uh, visible here on let's see if I can find their um, their map uh, storm surge, right? That's what we're looking at and that's what we're worried about as well. Sometimes that's the main threat. They have upgraded this here. Uh, it was in the up to 12 feet last night. Now they've updated this 12 feet or more for this area near uh, Yankee Town and up to the uh, Asilla River. If you're in that area, do not, I wouldn't be sitting out there on the coast, that's for sure. I'd definitely be inland. So you got all the wind, the rain, and now the storm surge potential. So this is a serious deal, and this is all brought from the uh, Hurricane Adalia. National Hurricane Center, not messing around with this one. They're issuing all sorts of warnings for this area. Now, this is 12 feet plus above ground level. As you can see, portions over here across the Georgia, South Carolina area, and North Carolina as well, are listed underneath some of this storm surge forecast. It is expected, again, to uh, head towards the northeast um, probably right around landfall or just before it takes that sharp turn uh, towards the northeast <clears throat> uh, again major hurricane status this one says 8 a.m. but anywhere between uh, I think anywhere between midnight and, and early Wednesday morning is when we're gonna see that eye wall and the strongest uh, bands of rain and wind hit this area it should be a tropical storm very quickly um, as it will degrade once it hits over land uh, so we're not looking at any uh, extreme major winds up through here. Just some tropical storm force uh, winds. Storm surge, storm surge warning here. Let me show you guys again. In the red, the, well, this is kind of a darker pink, at least on my end. Uh, and that includes areas around Tampa, south as well. Uh, the Cape Coral area looks like it's underneath a storm surge watch. And uh, portions over here underneath that storm surge watch as well. 
storm surge inundation map here. This is kind of interesting. Kind of shows you where the uh, potential flooding concerns exist. Now, greater than nine feet above ground is going to be in the red. That uh, covers a good portion out here around the Yankee Town. And um, obviously all over the west coast here of the Florida area. There's our outer band of uh, wind right now. That's uh, tropical storm force winds. Again, this is uh, going to rapidly intensify as we uh, go throughout the day today. There is uh, a little bit of tornado potential out here from the Storm Prediction Center with a slight risk being issued here across Florida. Uh, so just a heads up on that. Uh, you know, along with the uh, possibility of flooding and everything else, you mix in tornadoes as well. Arrival time of winds. Florida uh, is already getting or going to be getting some of those winds here very soon. Looks like sometime late afternoon tonight. Uh, early evening, I should say. Um, should see some tropical storm force winds here at southern Texas. Or uh, southern uh, Florida, excuse me. <laughs> and then into uh, the evening a little bit further up before landfall early Wednesday morning once again. Flash flooding is a major concern as well. That's uh, a lot of rainfall that's going to be bringing in here. Uh, with the arrival of Hurricane Adalia. Moderate risk here for uh, looks like areas around Jacksonville, stretching all the way up into Savannah, Charleston area as well. Uh, so play it safe out there. Here's the U.S. rainfall potential, still upwards around 6 to 10 inches of rainfall here across Florida and into portions of Georgia and South Carolina. Tampa is on the outer bands here, but again, the cone of uncertainty, right? The cone of uncertainty is uh, within this white area. Could go a little south, a little bit towards the northwest. We'll definitely keep an eye on that. Latest models here. Let me show you guys the uh, forecast models. Make sure I have the most recent one, which I do. See, Flor or see Florida down here, Adalia. We put this into motion and uh, definitely rapidly intensifies right at landfall or right before with the expected minimum pressure there around 959 uh, before uh, getting shred to pieces there once it heads northward over land. But this weather model still wants to show that it holds intact somewhat as some type of tropical system before being brought back into the Florida area. Doesn't look like it's gonna be uh, organized, but there is uh, all that moisture left over that will be brought back around into the Florida area. Kind of a Interesting scenario. We'll definitely continue to watch that and see uh, if it attempts to form a tropical system there again. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once again, Category 3 uh, expected. Right now, the information here that these guys are putting out uh, from the Wonderground, Weather Underground. Let me refresh this, make sure it's the latest info. Uh, looks like it is put out 2 p.m. Eastern time. This should update pretty soon. 80 mile per hour sustained winds uh, with gusts up to 90 miles per hour. Moving off to, towards the north at about 13 miles per hour. Again, category three up here in the red, 111 to 129 miles per hour is expected. Now the intensity scale uh, still holding pretty consistent here. Of course, the hours are getting short. That's why it's uh, listed up here on the map as a forecast hour here in about 12 hours. Uh, we could start to see the peak of the um, of this storm of uh, Hurricane Adalia. Some models are reaching up there in the high category 2, high um, low category 3. Notice that more consistent right here about this line. These are knots. These are not, uh, you know, as far as miles per hour. Uh, so we're looking at, uh, again, 111 to 129 mile per hour winds, sustained winds, once we get to the Category 3 uh, hurricane level. Goodness, <laughs> pretty big deal. Uh, and most of the models, of course, do show that downtrend once it hits over land. 
and of course weakening. But notice all of them are almost in agreement with a strong category two, <clears throat> category three hurricane. Uh, let's see what else we have here. There's the path. Again, cone of uncertainty. Just uh, stay safe out there, folks. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people in the harm's way out here. Wind speed probabilities. This is a no-brainer. This is definitely going to be uh, a good percentage, 100% chance of uh, tropical storm force winds, I'm sure. Uh, but we're expecting, again, Category 3 level winds within this area of Florida late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'm wondering if this thing's going to develop an eye wall, though. We'll have to keep an eye on that. All right, uh, let's go ahead and check out some earthquake activity here real quick. See what we got going on around the globe. Anything, uh, doesn't look like anything major overnight. Uh, still haven't seen too much adjustment here across the plate boundary. Did see one earthquake, though, near the Vanuatu area, 4.5. This one pretty deep, uh, but not, not a whole lot of adjustment down south here across the New Zealand or the Kermadec Trench. I expect this to fill in. Uh, and possibly, you know, just ignoring this 4.5, it is a deep earthquake. So that, if anything, is adding further strain out here across this region. Uh, definitely keep an eye on this area today. We did see a little bit of adjustment up here around the Mariana Islands. Guam area, 5.2. This one deep as well. Uh, another deep earthquake up north into the Izu Trench, 4.4. Uh, almost 500 kilometers deep. So things are getting... Pretty tight out here in terms of the stress. Deeper movement quakes all over the place, including the ones yesterday. Remember that uh, seven-pointer was super deep? Aftershock activity super deep as well. So the majority of these quakes are way down there below the surface, indicating a lot of strain out here at the surface levels and the subduction zones where we expect most of the strain to be built up. Uh, keep an eye on this area back here where it's been awfully quiet since this movement. Uh, same for the Kuro-Kamachaka Trench. Goodness, this just continues to remain quiet. I don't see how. Um, it should have been showing some movement by now as far as large-scale activity goes, but it just hasn't. So it's this is definitely one on the list there for uh, concern. Uh, Pacific Northwest, as far as activity around Mount St. Helens goes, it looks like, uh, well, not a whole lot showing up today. Did have a couple of them in the last days or so last couple days a little swarm was going on at mount st helens we'll check that a little bit later on this evening as uh, far as california goes very quiet for the most part small little earthquake activity out here along the san diego trough uh, let's see what we got it looks like a 3.6 earlier this morning about one o'clock or so that was followed up by uh A handful of smaller earthquakes. San Andreas Fault, not a whole lot going on out here. Just looks like a typical day. No major swarming, just a small amount of earthquake activity out there. And Yellowstone National Park, mainly small earthquakes as well out here. And a look at the seismograph stations here throughout Yellowstone National Park shows uh, not a whole lot of anything. There's a handful of the smaller, very small earthquakes. But again, nothing major going on. Same for the eastern portion of the country. The Caribbean plate here still looks somewhat active. This has been an area of interest uh, since yesterday. Did see some oddball movement here across, um, well, off the coast here of Panama. And some movement here near the uh, Dominica area along the eastern side of the Caribbean plate. And um, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on that area as well. South America, one earthquake here in the Chile area from yesterday. Aside from that, uh, movement across the area of the Mediterranean. Did see some upper fours today, it looks like. Well, one from yesterday. Actually, both of these are from yesterday there. Uh, Crete and the Turkey area all seen some fours yesterday. One earthquake here in China earlier this morning, about 4 o'clock or so. Look at the EMSC model. Yeah, it looks about the same as it did yesterday. No major movement taking place out there. A little bit of activity up north. Oh, what is that up there? Up around uh, Finland area, maybe Sweden. Seen some small earthquake activity. 
Aside from that, uh, we'll continue to watch the conditions out here. I don't think we've seen anything major going on out here across the Hawaii area. Things are toning down slightly. I had a dream uh, last night about this thing going off. <clears throat> uh, let's double check the hazard notification system here. See what we got from the HVO. This was put out today, earlier today it looks like. Uh, elevated seismic activity continues in the area south of the summit caldera. Uh, doesn't look like any of these earthquakes have surfaced far as migration towards the surface. No upward migration. So we have magma moving around down there. Just uh, hasn't really found a way to the surface yet. Or maybe there's not enough um, volume down there to push it up. Either way, we'll continue to watch that there at Kilauea Volcano. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, again, Florida is in that area of slight risk category, and that includes a 5% chance for tornado possibilities there. <clears throat> Looks like Tampa, St. Petersburg area as well. And, of course, you know, wind, that's kind of a, a big deal down there with the arrival of Adalia. Space weather activity uh, still continues to show flatline movement well below the sea flare category although we're starting to stretch up a little bit let's take a look at our newer sunspot 3417 here it's going to be this area right here uh, approaching oh well, it's definitely on the visible disc i would say on the earth side we'll continue to watch this area for some uh maybe for some de development hopefully uh, most of these sunspots that have been earth facing have been pretty quiet lately they don't want to uh they don't want to mess with things, it looks like. They behave, so to speak. I've seen many flares out here across sunspot regions, pretty large ones, and then as soon as they get over here, the sunspots, they behave and just degrade, kind of like these are doing. A couple other newer sunspots here on the northeastern limb will watch. Either way, uh, looks like, uh, let's see what we got for potential. 75% chance, goodness, of a sea flare. M flare at 15 and uh, I'm sure less than 1% for the X-Flare category. Either way, a couple sunspots here on the visible disk that harbor a little complex structure. Beta Gamma and a Beta Delta for 3413 and 3415. No major roars. No, nothing in the forecast either. All right, guys, stay safe out there. And, of course, the arrival of um, Hurricane... Adalia will probably be doing a little more updating here today, uh, keeping an eye on this as this hurricane gets much closer uh, to the area of Florida. Be prepared, stay safe out there. We'll chat you guys a little bit later on throughout the day.